This is my personal backyard weather station that I've been using for about a year, a little bit over a year, maybe a year and one month or so. This is the Ambient Weather WS2000. And this is my second Ambient Weather weather station. This one's about a year old and my previous one was the WS2902, I think it was B, the letter B. Yeah, but I had the um, WS2902B for five years. That was not one issue, no problems at all. It was a perfect little backyard weather station. Um, I only upgraded to the WS2000 because this one has, allows me to add a lightning sensor right there at the bottom. And so far these things have been very accurate as far as everything in my local area and in the backyard and everything. It measures wind, wind speed, direction, rain, temperature, humidity, UV, uh, index solar radiation and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, this one does pretty good as far as I wanted lightning detection because I've always been interested in that kind of stuff. And the previous one I had for five years worked flawless, no issues. I just sold that to upgrade to this one. Both are excellent systems and all the information from ambient weather from this backyard right from my backyard right here is pushed out to the internet and it's on the ambient weather network website. And it's also pushed out to the weather underground website. So on those two websites, it's all free. You could see everyone's local weather station, well, personal weather station across the whole entire planet. Not just my location, but the entire world. So it's interesting. You can see all the weather stations in your area and see where everyone's conditions are. And, and you can compare data. I mean, it pushes out every two minutes, I think it is. Two minutes or a little bit less or so. Or maybe one minute or something like that. Also goes to the app on the phone and you can set alerts. Like I have alerts set up for uh, wind gusts, solar radiation, certain percentage of rain and lightning strikes and things like that. And I've always been into personal weather stations ever since I was a kid, ever since probably junior high school. And before ambient weather, I had a uh, Accurite. I had about three different Accurite weather stations. My last one was the Accurite five in one weather station. And that weather station, it was okay, but the temperatures were never correct. The temperatures were only correct if you're in a cloudy day or at nighttime. If it was in the sunlight, the temperature was always higher than what it's supposed to be. And it had a little miniature solar panel on there that um, it operated a little miniature fan inside, like a fan inspired aspirator, aspirator whatever it is. And it's supposed to blow across the temperature sensor to try, try to help regulate good temperature readings. But it was never good in the sunlight. It measured rain, speed, wind, and stuff like that. It, that that one I had for about for maybe five years. And before that one, I had this Accurite. It was basically a wind weather station. That one was okay, but same issues with temperature. <laughs> so that one I had for about maybe four years. And before that, I had several lacrosse weather stations. Um, the wireless backyard ones, but it didn't do all the bells and whistles like these as far as wind and um, rain. It's just mainly the temperature, humidity, and air pressure and stuff like that. And before that, back in uh, junior high, my first weather station was this little scientific one, like right here. And that was like in a science fair. I had to sell so many products or whatever it is like candy bars or something and your reward was you can pick from the catalog and i picked that little weather station little miniature one and it was okay just put on a little pole in the backyard measured rain and the wind you had to look at it and see all that kind of stuff but that's how i got into it i've always been into weather stations i've always liked to see stuff spinning for some reason like at the top of this one you see everything moving all the moving parts and also i've always been into it because i fly model airplanes and stuff like that i always need to know hey what's the wind gust today is it okay to fly and as far as um rain I always keep up with my backyard rain because that determines how much water i need to water if we do need to water you know for like water lawns and gardens and things like that and astronomy you know, don't know what the winds are if it's, it's too windy to you know the um, image tonight because that could lead to poor scene conditions and things like that 
Anyway, that's this weather station I have right here. I'm not gonna go in a lot of detail. There's a bunch of videos on them all over YouTube. They've been out for years. And this one I just mounted, I had two antenna masts, five foot sections I just mounted with these little antenna mounts on the back of my shed. And that's it. This same mount has been here for going on six years now, but this weather station has been in use for a little over a year. And the console inside, um, I'll show you a little clip of that, but that's a lot of videos on them. I'm just showing this is my little personal opinion because they work pretty good and they're pretty rock solid. This one operates off of solar in the daytime. It has a little miniature solar panel and it also charges a super capacitor on the inside. So at night, I think it runs off at a super capacitor and also has two double A's on the inside. That, And the double A's I use, the Energizer Lithium because they're last, I've never had to replace them. The batteries that I put in here are from my previous Ambient Weather 2902B. That's how old those batteries are. And they are still going, those lithiums, because it runs off the sun in the daytime and a super capacitor, I guess, helps it go through the night. But that's a shot of this station. Um, but that's all I got. That's just a shot of the... Oh, also on the top of here, you can see, I put little bird spikes over the rain gauge. I've never had an issue with birds ever until I got this station. I have these miniature little sparrow birds. They love to perch up on the top of the rain gauge. So I got the bird spikes. They're like, I think $16. And it doesn't hurt the birds. The birds just see the spikes and they don't want to land. So, so far since I put them around the rain gauge, I haven't had any birds perching up on top of here. Here's a shot of the indoor console right here. And I'm not going to go in depth with this because it's a lot of videos on YouTube about what this console has and how you can go through all the settings and all. But it's just basically, you know, your console, you got your outdoor temperature, outdoor wind speed, um, feels like temperature, dew point, humidity, barometric pressure, um, daily max gust. You got your solar radiation and UV index, rain and all your rain information, the pressure right here, forecast, um, your indoor temperature. You can see I have the lightning detector. You can see it detected lightning. Lightning three days ago it was about seven miles away. And if you have more sensors like I do, you could scroll through them like that one's in my observatory, it's like 91 in there. That one's in my shed, it's 103 in my shed right now. Uh, my attic, 105, and like my garage. And you can have it cycle automatically, or just put it on one, but you can add more sensors like soil moisture sensors and things like that. But this is just the console, I'm not gonna go on a whole bunch of detail, but you can see it's signal stream from outside, uh, your Wi-Fi signal, and that's let you know it's online with ambient weather, the um, weather, website so it's sending all this information to them and then that's how it's posted online on web page and and stuff like that also it's on weather underground also but um i didn't set up through the console i set it up through the app itself so all this data streamed to uh those two sites excluding your indoor stuff is mainly outdoor conditions now you can add other sensors you know your other uh data to be displayed online but i didn't choose it i just do just outdoor sensors and stuff like that so people around the area can see that's what conditions are in my backyard. You see like current wind is like 2.9 miles per hour. It's gusting about 3.4. And today's max gust was like 10.3 miles an hour. Zero rain. I mean, you can see your rain, but weekly, hourly. Say it like for the past year, since January it resets, we had 23 inches of rain already. And that's all, it's a whole bunch of more stuff you can see on here, alerts and everything, but I'm not gonna go in detail. I'm just showing you a quick view of the indoor console. Two hundred and seventy three strikes.